boycott, divestment and sanction. We talk about the worldwide campaign to end Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine and its implications in Australia. From Melbourne, you're watching The World From Below, I'm Zoe Holman. In this week's episode, we're joined by Professor Peter Schlezak. Peter is an Associate Professor of Philosophy at the University of New South Wales and co-founder of Independent Australian Jewish Voices, a group which aims to broaden public discourse in support of Palestinian rights, especially within the Jewish community. Peter is also Executive Member of Australia-Palestine Advocacy Network, a coalition of organisations and individuals seeking to influence public policy in relation to Palestine and Israel. We start today's program with a look at the basics of the BDS movement. Peter, can you tell us what is the rationale of this campaign and what are its objectives? Well, uh, the campaign began when uh, the um, Palestinian civil society, a whole bunch of them, most of the civil society organisations, called for a, a boycott movement almost exactly 10 years ago now. And um, it spread from there. And I can tell you the three main planks, the three main demands of the official boycott movement. Um, the first one, of course, perhaps the most important one, is to just end the occupation. Uh, the, the second uh, demand is to um, give full equality to the Palestinians who are inside what is today's Israel. Um, the Palestinians inside Israel are suffering um, not only discrimination uh, of all sorts, but they actually have 30 or 40 or maybe more actual laws on the books which are discriminatory and place the Palestinians at a a legal disadvantage. So the claim that Israel is a democratic state is not true uh, for all sorts of reasons. One other reason is that um, Israel is technically defined uh, as the state of the Jewish people, not of its citizens. And uh, so apart from the actual forms of discrimination, for example, house demolitions and, and uh, removing Israeli citizens who are Palestinians from the Negev and demolishing their, their dwellings, uh, there's a serious uh, legal uh, sense in which they're also discriminated against. Um, so, uh, so that's the second plank. And the third plank, which is certainly very controversial and has many practical difficulties, is the uh, right of return. The Palestinians uh, in international law have uh, a right of return uh, for having been expelled. Um, and uh, in, in, in 1948, uh, something like 750,000 Palestinians were driven out. There's a lot of mythology surrounding that. For years it was claimed that they left voluntarily and so on. Uh, none of that's true, and the historians have established that. But the point is that in law, in international law, they have the right of return. Uh, it's particularly uh, egregious that uh, the Jews around the world and Israelis protest uh, uh, vehemently and say the most extraordinary, inappropriate things about this right of return, while they maintain that all Jews, any Jew, has a what they call the law of return, a right to go to Israel, I'm talking about Jews, Jews from Brooklyn or me uh, from Sydney who has no connection really with Israel and they claim uh, a right of every Jew to go which is a right that the Palestinians themselves don't have even if they actually hold the keys to the house that they were evicted from. This is a scandal and it's an outrage and the Jewish community in the world should, should the hypocrisy of that is, is just appalling. Well the first thing to say is that it's a reaction to the fraudulence and the failure of the so-called peace process. It was never a peace process. It's clear, just you don't have to know much to know that it hasn't led to, well, peace. It's led to peace. There's no actual hostilities, but it hasn't led to justice. The Palestinians have basically lost uh, continually uh, more and more property from the settlements and the essential uh, annexation uh, uh, that the Israelis have, have uh, um, executed during this so-called peace process. So this is an attempt, and it's very important to say that it's a, a form of non-violent uh, a peaceful protest uh, based on familiar uh, method of, of uh, protest, which is um, sanctions, boycotts, and other forms of, of protest, which are a choice that people make about how to spend their money and uh, what to invest in. So that's uh, a result of the fact that essentially uh, Palestine has been uh, effectively destroyed. And this is an attempt to, to resist that and to put pressure on our government and, and thereby onto the Israeli government. I mean, through course, the American government, which is perhaps the most important. So this is a, an attempt to, to do something which civil society all around the world is capable of doing. We citizens have very few options, and the Palestinians have called on, on, on people, as in the case of South Africa. There are lots of differences uh, between the case of Palestine and South Africa, but this uh, a form of protest, and it's hardly an unfamiliar or, or, or uh, um, 
inappropriate form of, of peaceful protest. We use boycotts all the time. When it comes to academic institutions, what sort of partnerships and other forms of tacit support for Israel can we see in Australia? The, the concern of the boycott movement, though, is uh, to um, protest and to um, create obstacles or to, to remove uh, in institutional cooperation. It's important to say that because the uh, universities in Israel are in some very important ways complicit in the uh, occupation. They don't protest against the uh, rights of other, uh, universities inside Palestine, uh, in Gaza that have been destroyed. And the universities themselves, uh, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem is partly occupying uh, um, historical Palestine. They're, they're, so they're not innocent. And the important thing to emphasize is that what everyone thinks of the boycott movement, it's not against individuals and it's not against individual academics, uh, personal relations and others. It's very explicitly and specifically against institutions that are in some way complicit or, or profiting um, from the occupation and, and, and that makes it very uh, importantly different because a lot of the protest against it has coming from, from people in the Jewish community and others are saying that, well, we're violating the most productive uh, cooperative dialogue between academics. It's not doing that at all. It's, it's uh, at the level of institutions. And can you tell us a bit more about these sorts of claims based on racial vilification? Look, the first thing to say is, I mean, it's relevant to mention that a, a book has recently been published here in, in Australia by two academics, Jewish academics, uh, Nick Dyrenfirth and uh, Philip Mendes. And it's called, I'll just look at the title, it's Boycotting Israel is Wrong. Um, I think it's a, a, a disgraceful book, I have to say it very strongly. And it's relevant to the point you're making about the charge of anti-Semitism. They uh, recycle the charge that the boycott movement is, they say, at its core, anti-Semitic. Now, first, I have to say straight away, I don't doubt that there's some anti-Semites out there. There are Jew haters and always have been. I happen to know most of the people at the forefront of the boycott movement in Australia and, and some around the world. And I have to say that firstly, at an individual level, these are the most decent uh, uh, people that you can imagine, the, the best people I've ever known. The, the f first thing to say about it is that they are motivated by a concern for human rights and international law and justice for the Palestinians. And the idea that you would slander these people explicitly as um, Nazis, as, and I say Nazis, not just anti-Semitic. Now, the Jewish community and the leadership and around the world and these two authors, I don't know how to express my revulsion at the idea that you would th throw that slander at people, rightly or wrongly, who support uh, the human rights and justice of the Palestinians. And they could be mistaken, and you don't have to agree with the boycott movement to recognize that this kind of uh, slur, defamation of decent people, is disgraceful. And it's also uh, only possible to get away with it, as this book does, which is very important to say. They, in their ent entire book, don't discuss the grounds on which people want to uh, boycott. You're watching The World From Below, and after the break, we'll take a closer look at the efforts to discredit the BDS campaign, as well as some of its achievements. 